So the most important thing when we talk about any aspects of theology, which is the truth about God, the theologos, theo as in God, logos, word, or explanation, we have to go by the concept that the Bible is the truth, is the true word of God. Without understanding that concept, without embracing and accepting the concept that the Bible is the word of God, it's going to be very difficult for anybody to get to grasping some of these important concepts. So let's start there. The Bible is the truth, speaks the word of God. Therefore, we're going to use that as our reference to delve into this important topic, who God is. And God is explained as one God in three persons. Let me explain to you where that is found in the Bible. So we're going to start with the Gospel of John. John 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word, when we move on to John 1 verse 14, is Christ. Let me read it to you. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we understand that Christ is God and is also the Word. So now let's move to Genesis first chapter, first three ver verses. And he says, Genesis 1, 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God, with the original Hebrew word, is Elohim. And Elohim is a plural word, technically God's, but he's used in a singular way with the verb. So it's clear that there is a plurality, but yet it's a singular entity creating the world. And the first verse, the accent is on the verb create. So God created the heavens and the earth. Now let's go to verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So in the second verse is now the emphasis on the Spirit of God. It is God but in his spirit person. Bear in mind that nothing is yet created, so there isn't anything else. It is the Spirit of God, which we call the Holy Spirit. But still God, yet is the Holy Spirit. Now let's move on to verse 3. And remember what we just read in John 1, which is that Christ is God and Christ is the Word. So let's go to Genesis now, verse 3, chapter 1, verse 3. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So in verse 3, it is the word, the spoken word, which creates. Therefore, that spoken word is Christ. So in the first three verses of Genesis, you're introduced to the Father, verse 1, the Holy Spirit, verse 2, and the word, or Christ, verse 3. So now that we understand that God is one in three persons, we're going to go to 1 John 5, verse 7, and go to your King James Bibles, and it says, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. So John in the epistle is clearly telling us as a summary and a description that God is one, yet is three person. So how do we know that God is one? Well, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 44, verse 6 says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first. And I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. This is Old Testament Isaiah speaking. Two very important things here. One is the Lord, the King of Israel, his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and in the last. And besides me, there is no God. So again, very clear statement of who God is. One God. Now when we go to Revelation 22... As we just read Isaiah, let's see what it says. Revelation 22, verse 12. 
And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. His, this is Christ speaking. To give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And what did we just read in Isaiah? Let's go back to it. And it says, Isaiah 44, verse 6, I am the first and I am the last. And again in Revelation 22, verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. There is no doubt. There is no contradiction. There is no distinction. This is, again, Christ speaking as God. And lastly, just to clarify that the Holy Spirit is God, is the third person of the Godhead. Let's go to Matthew first and in verse 20. So Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Is the Son of God, is the Son of God. The Holy Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit is also God in three persons. So I hope this helps you understand. And as a final reminder, remember that when Jesus speaks about the unforgivable sin in Matthew, he says that all sins will be forgiven, even blasphemy against the Father and the Son, but not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Is that important? Not that the Father and the Son are not. They're just as equally important. They're also that one God. But for those of you who don't believe the Holy Spirit is God or that Christ is not God, I would really recommend it to go to your Bible, get a King James Version, and study deeply. Do not follow traditions or man or what some religions teach you. Look it up for yourself. Delve into the Word of God. Pray to God and the Holy Spirit to give you guidance. This is so important. We have to read the true gospel, not lean on traditions, not lean on our understanding. Study the Bible, get the truth. God is one in three persons. Peace.